right there. Drop your weapons. So Severus is finally here. She's actually been here for a couple days now, and honestly, the reception for her has been pretty good. She's actually being compared to Kazuha at C0 to C2. It's actually like that comparable. I was very excited about Severus because she's a pyro healer, and we haven't had a pyro healer since Bennett in like 1.0, so I've been really excited for that. But I think most of her teams might just include Bennett anyways, so we'll see. The big talk has been all about the constellations. Um, I'm at C0. I don't really plan the wish on this banner currently. Today's banner is Raiden and Yoimiya. It's a pretty cool banner because it all kind of makes sense. It's an overload team, no matter which way you put it. But, uh, you know, there's way too many cool characters coming out on the horizon. It's just not the time, you know, especially wishing for a four star. Don't do that. C1 is energy for everybody else on the team. C2 is like more damage with her shot, level increase for her skill. You can use her burst, and then when you use your burst after that, your skill doesn't go on cooldown. So you can actually use your skill a couple times before it goes into cooldown. C5 is a uh, burst increase, and then C6, you get to heal the entire party by only 10% of her max HP, but you also get 20% power damage bonus and electro damage bonus, and it stacks up to three times. So you get 60 power damage bonus. Let's say give or take about maybe four seconds because it's every time she heals, you get one stack. So, so honestly pretty insane considering her passives. Now, as you guys already know, unfortunately she does have the pretty restrictive passive. You can only play pyro or electro units, which does take away creativity from team building, like putting animo in there or something like that. But the payoff is 40% rush shred for both of those elements. So not just one, but both of them, which is pretty insane when you put all this together, because remember that is pretty much what the VV set is. The VV set is literally, you know, it's for a longer duration, but it's 40% res down as well. So it's a pretty big deal. Like that's kind of what makes VV really good. And especially with Kazwa himself giving you like a 40% elemental damage buff. That's the same thing that Chevreuse does, except it's kind of at C6. And it's actually 20% more than Kazwa because it's at 60% when it's maxed out. So 60% damage bonus for Pyro and Electro, and you have 40% rush red for both Pyro and Electro. So as you can tell, they really want you to play Pyro and Electro. <laughs> I put her on Ocean Clamp right now with a healing bonus circlet because that's kind of the way I got the gist of how to play her. You can try and go for damage, but I don't want to really even try that until like I have C6 or have the constellations. But C0 test today, Ocean Clam, C0. I went to six on this because I'm kind of stingy when it comes to resources. <laughs> and we have a brand new boss, uh, relatively, relatively brand new boss. So I'm kind of trying to like save those for future characters. But we're low ball on it, low budget, low investment, and uh, Rightful Reward, the Fontaine Weapon, or Fav, or even Black Tassel you could use for HP. Level 80. So there are a lot of caveats here. We're not level 90. We don't have the most HP. So just a kind of mediocre test here. Now first things first, I want to see her healing. Very mediocre, low level healing. So with Ocean Clam, she's doing 2400. Let's uh <laughs> slap on a, uh, a Black Tassel here. A little bit more HP. 25. And what if we drop the healing bonus and just go HP? It's probably going to be less, but I'm just curious to see. Yeah. So I figure if you're going to play her with Bennett, maybe the healing set may not be the best idea. Unless it's the brand new one. Unfortunately, I don't have this one leveled up right now. I don't have a set on this one, but... This will probably be her best in slot, at least for now, I believe. Maybe even Noblesse. Now, Hyoverse themselves are trying to push this set. It's on her in the trial as well. Like, if you play Chevreuse's trial, this is the set that she has on. I don't know if it's the best in slot for sure, but it definitely seems like it should be good. Or better, rather. Now, there's one thing that's extremely important to know about Chevreuse. Her passive, called Vertical Force Coordination, it says after she fires an overcharged ball using her E skill, she'll give the Pyro and Electro characters the attack buff, right? Based on her max HP. This actually won't happen unless you hold it down. 
Now that, that is here in the description right here, but that's just a good thing to know. If you don't hold it down, you will not get this buff. So when you're actually playing an overload comp, you're gonna have this fiery aura on you. And it's actually pretty cool. It goes for all characters. But notice how Sheru's has no symbols or anything next to her like that. Her attack right now is 1,245. Remember that. Now, if we do an overload reaction, any character, right? Notice Chevreuse has the bullet next to her on her left hand side. Now we're still at 1,245 attack. That hasn't changed. If I just press it, her skill, still the same. We did not get the attack buff. Everybody would get the attack buff if this was held down. So notice how when you press it, you don't actually get the passive. But now you can see if I hold it down, the bullet is gone and you can see my attack went up by 200. Now it's not that crazy for Chevrolet's attack, but the point is the attack buff does go up because we actually use it effectively. So everybody's attack went up by a little bit because we have the actual passive active. So a simple heads up for that. I just want people to know that, you know, you can't just press it and get the buff from this. It actually has to be held down. So we're gonna try a Raiden Hyper Carry variant and we're gonna do a comparison between a level 80, low invested Chevreuse at C0 and a fairly invested Kazuha at level 90 and kind of see how close she can get even with Kazuha having the upper hand. Although we are actually gonna give Chevreuse a little bit more HP. So we did give her the HP circlet instead of the healing bonus. So she will have a little bit more HP, bring her to close to like 40,000. So she's actually almost maxing out her uh, vertical force coordination passive. So we're gonna do a simple Raiden E, Kazuha, Bennett, Kuchosara, and no crit. So we're gonna start with the Kazuha version. I made sure to have Raiden's chakra circle all the way full as well, so it's gonna be the same. Let's see it. So we'll do an old Ryan E, swirl it, bend it. Get 478,000 damage. I also failed to mention, yes, this is a C2 Raiden. That's where we're at right now. And 62, 161. So those will all be the same for the Chevrolet's test as well. And now for the Chevy test, we're gonna do E on Raiden. With the overload reaction get our buff and we go four hundred and sixty eight K so you can see even at C0 with level 80 by the way this is very like under invested as well about 40k HP so like we're almost hitting the cap C0 using a, a, a three star weapon, <laughs> R5 uh, three star weapon, Black Tassel with uh, Ocean Clam. We are literally like this close to about how much Kozel would buff the team. So, pretty impressive. And now I definitely see the comparison between Kozel and Chevrolet. Obviously, Kozel can fit in other teams, and Chevrolet is only for the Overload team, but very good. Very good. Chevrolet actually gives me a lot of nostalgia because my very first team in this game ever was Raiden, Kujo, Sara, Shang Li, and Bennett. So to kind of like see how things come back around is pretty interesting. Now real quick, let's run through a couple of Electro and Pyro teams and just see how much she buffs them. So as far as cards go, we're just gonna go with nothing, like no burst buff or no attack buff because we just wanna see what the raw damage is. So our rotation, Oh boy, rotations are gonna be triple E on Yai. Sara, I guess. We get 91 on Yai. Wow. Yeah, look at that. 91 on Yai. I'm not trying to like target Kazwa, it's just it's like the best comparison here. So now let's try it again. Same deal. Okay. The fact that it's still close is alarming. So, 
I can't imagine her at C6. Once again, this is just C0. We have zero cons and Chevrolet. It will most certainly be better than Kazawa at C6. Going in with Yoi. Let's do a Fashil. Got the overloader reaction. Get that going. And the classic getting staggered. Got a 59. Wow, I am getting the best RNG. Yeah. Pretty consistent 59, though. So let's go with Burst, because we don't want HP. It's going to buff Utao. We'll do a Look Alive. Ride an E. And go. So we're doing a... <laughs> Solid 30k on uh, Crimson set. Shimano would definitely be more, but I was just curious to see what would happen with Chevrolet and Hotel. <laughs> oh boy. Overload Sino. Let's see how this goes. Let's do an E. Didn't reach him. Wow. <laughs> Let's get that going. Buff. Are gonna use Shang Ling here because yeah, let's see. I think the only reason why that even went that good was just because of Shang Ling. Let's try without her. Let's try again with Fashil. Toma. The show though, got that big hit. And we're looking at... Yeah. Sino, I think you should just stay with Dendro, buddy. I think you should just stay on with the Dendro teams. Yeah, Sino was definitely meant to be doing Aggravate, not to be Aggravated. So... Denjo is definitely his go-to. As far as everybody else, I feel like they can definitely fit into it. Like Yaimiko, Raiden definitely. Last but not least, let's try Lenny. I'm a little worried because it's going to take him a little while to get going within Chevrolet's six second buff. But let's see. Let's go skill with HP. Going to start with him. Raiden E. Buff. Start getting these stacks up. We're in the Bennett Circle. One twenty four. Let's get three. No crit. I missed. <laughs> Let's do two CAs with Lenny. Get the stack's going. Shove roof buff. Get a stack from that. One forty three. Nice. We're gonna lose the power ore a little bit with overloaded. But let's just try and get our stacks up and see what five stacks looks like with Chevrolet. And there he goes. Chevrolet buff. Got three. Let's go for the five, the big five. 143. Nice. Okay. All right. Yeah, I can definitely work for Lenny. I'll admit, I really wanted Cheroos to be able to work alone without Bennett. But I think at C6, that will definitely be a lot more viable. So, I know we already tried her earlier, but let's just see how this looks uh, in practice in the Abyss. Let's do a Cheroos burst for the Chakra. Ride an E, Bennett, Shangling, Globa. Just shoot the air because he's not there. 320. Yeah, this is very good. There you go, 20 seconds down. You don't actually have to hit the enemy, which is nice. Let's do some of this. Get the shove roof buff. Kind of just do everything here. Yeah, pretty nice. This is the new and improved spin. Or Fontaine. Got this. The 
get some of this and go. 364. Ah, no more stamina. Get the buff. You forget me, you actually gotta pop all my burst so Ryan can actually do her thing here. So that team is basically just, you know, three out of four of the same units you would use anyways. But it's cool to see that you can get a bonus from that one slot that's actually missing. That slot being Sing Cho, or maybe even Kujo Sara or Kazuma. Now we have the Tolpa. Ooh, this is not great. All right, Let's see how this looks. We actually do get the overload reaction, which is nice. 87. I'm trying to switch. 326. Ooh, we might be dead here. Oh, no, we're fine. Wow, we pretty close, actually. It's like 30% of his health left. It's kind of nice. And Chevrolet is actually a pretty good battery for <laughs> Shy Wing. Yeah, it's very good, man. I'm genuinely impressed with four with this four star because I'll be honest, we've gotten some great four stars in the past, like Pharaohs on and stuff like that, but they still really want their C6. Chevrolet wants C6, but it's not as important. You know what I mean? You want it, yes. But you don't actually need it. You definitely want it, but it's not like the character is literally useless before C6, you know? It's not it's not a C6 or a bus character. So very happy with her, honestly. And this is how a character should be, right? A character should not be feeling so like clunky or like bad at C0 and then you feel like you have to get the C6, it should feel okay at C0, and then it gets better the more constellations you get. And C6 is just like a game changer, or very, very favorable, or comfy, or like, you know, power scaling. Like, this is just how you would do a character like this, especially for a four star. I feel like their support should really be four stars for the most part. Of course, not all the time, it doesn't have to be, but yeah, I can't imagine having this as well. You get the, the healing bonus, which is nice, and you also get the the damage percent. So now here's the thing. Now for anyone out there thinking about getting Chevrolet's cons, if you haven't already, I just want to say this. Now this could be complete copium, but the reason I myself, why I haven't gone for her cons are because these are two rerun characters that I don't really want any more cons of. I already have C2 for Raiden, and I don't want any of your Mia's cons. That's just me, though. But what I'm trying to say is, Chevrolet is an overload support, or overload like team comp kind of support, where she favors Pyro and Electro units. They're not doing this for no reason. Hyoverse is for sure going to release an overloaded character, like an overload DPS kind of character somebody that works with overload because they're not going to make a character support that and not have the actual character out themselves. So the only reason why Chevrolet is here right now is because she's in the actual story for 4.3, but she's getting the Mika scenario. This is the wish simulator app. It's actually really useful to track down the banners. If we search up Mika, he released in 3.5 next to Ayaka and Shenha. Mika being a physical support makes no sense for him to release with these characters at all. <laughs> but the reason why he did is because, once again, he was in the story. So with him being in the story, that puts him, you know, on the actual banner for the time being. But two versions after that, literally only two, just two. Just one, actually. He was on 3.8 next to Eula, where that is the support that he is actually meant to be for, or the DPS, rather. He's meant to support Eula, so, or at least physical characters. He came back so fast 
I feel like this is the same situation that's going to happen with Chevreuse. Chevreuse is here now because she's in the story, but she'll be back soon whenever Arlequino or Clorind or somebody of that synergistic sort of style should release and then have Chevreuse on that banner. That's what I'm thinking they're going to do. So I don't even want to bother with like wishing for a four star right now. I think it's better to just wait. And hopefully if Hyverse is smart, they'll put Chevreuse on the banner next to the corresponding character. Other examples of this would be Yunjin. Uh, Yunjin is not a, de a dedicated support, but she's just a normal attack support. So she'll, she buffs normal attack characters. She's always usually like on a Yoimiya banner. She was on this one that was in 3.7. We go back again. Um, she's on Lantern Right one, so I, I excuse those. That's just, you know, just happens to be Lantern Right. But she's on every Yoimiya one, and she's on every Ayato one. And both of those characters do normal attacks, hence why she's on those banners. Um, so. It's not exactly a dedicated support. It's just kind of a generalist for a specific thing. Yunjin, normal attacks, and um, uh, Mika was physical support. So if you look at someone like Farozan, that I don't count because those are like dedicated supports. So like she's always going to be on a Wanderer banner all the time, every time. Whereas someone like Yunjin is kind of a generalist for the normal attack characters. And... That's why she's always like kind of like on those banners, so to speak. So the Yoimiya and Aita banner. So I'm hoping if they want to make sense of the situation, they will actually put Chevreuse on an Arlequino or just a new five star, or more of a reason for you to actually wish on the banner and not just get copies of the same character that you don't want. If you don't want them, if you want them, go ahead. But I mean, you already got a whole banner right here who is an overload team, so. But that's all for me. Love Chevreus. I'm actually pretty impressed with her. And um, yeah, we'll definitely be back in a couple of patches. And I feel like they'll do it, man. I feel like they'll they'll put her on a good banner and we can actually get C6. And it actually will make sense. So that'll be all for me. As far as the future goes, every single Electro character, every single Pyro character, you should look out for because Chevreus exists now. Just like Animo, so Farazan exists, you know, Electro with Sara, eh, kind of. <laughs> but the point is, Electro and Pyro characters, keep an eye out. Now that Chevreuse exists. And if you don't actually have Chevreuse and you want Chevreuse, but you don't want to wish on the current banner right now, once again, same deal goes to you. Just wait. Pretty sure, I could be, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they'll put Chevreuse on a new five-star character banner and it'll make a lot more sense in the future. So that'll be all for me. Chevreuse is awesome. You know, gets all the props from me, all the praise from me, and I can't wait to get the cons. But once again, let me know in the comments what you guys think about Chevreuse yourself. Did you get her? Did you see Sixer? What teams are you playing? Did you make Sino work? <laughs> and um, yeah, that'll be all for me and I will catch you guys in the next one.